welcome to the Sprint 2 demo. I'm excited to hear the uh, demo a few things that we've been working on in the past uh, Sprint. Um, one of the main pieces of work uh, that the team's been working on is uh, implementing uh, parity with uh, Solar EAD with uh, using Traject. So most of the team has been working on this over the past Sprint and we have an extensive Traject config and I think we're very close. The last time I checked, we were down from maybe around 80 or 90 failing tests using the Traject index uh, when we first started to uh, something like uh, 20. So we're very close and just have a few more uh, elements coming up on that. Uh, some additional things that happened um, in this uh, sprint is uh, we added some automation around um, uh, internationalization files for Arclight. So not only in Arclight, but also in uh, one of Arclight's new dependencies, Blacklight Locale Picker. Uh, we have added some uh, internationalization updates and also some ways to uh, kind of hopefully keep those files up to date within the project. Um, another thing to call out is um, in Arclight here, um, we've added, uh, or we've changed the way that breadcrumbs look. So um, currently, um, we've uh, actually dropped these breadcrumbs onto new lines and then indented each one. Um, and then we can also see we removed the current page title from the breadcrumb list and we just have it underneath here. This is uh, setting up some forthcoming uh, new tickets on how the kind of um, show pages are being redesigned. Uh, another thing to call out is um, it's not really a user facing change, but the way that repositories can be um, configured has been updated. So uh, previously, um, you can configure your um, repositories uh, using a YAML file. And so that still remains the same, but all of these fields were kind of hard coded. So you could only use, you know, these specified fields. Uh, this has been changed now. And so now you could actually add your own custom fields and uh, use those as well. So that's exciting to see. And the final thing to just talk about before I hand it over to Gary, who's gonna discuss some designs is uh, we've updated the Arclight demo site. So the Arclight demo site is updated now, and uh, you can reach that at arclight-demo.project.blacklight.org. And so you can see the latest changes here um, are uh, with the breadcrumbs are now deployed uh, to Arclight demo. One thing to note about Arclight demo is uh, anytime uh, a PR gets, a uh, pull request gets merged to master and Arclight, Arclight demo will get rebuilt. Um, so that's exciting now that we have uh, continuous deployment set up. There's still a couple issues with Arclight demo um, uh, re-indexing content, and so we'll be working on fixing that up too. So those are the main engineering tasks uh, done over this past sprint. I wanna turn it over to Gary to talk about some of the design work. From a design perspective, it doesn't usually make sense for us to sort of talk about the design we do on a weekly basis in these demos. So we thought this week we would provide sort of a uh, an overview of the design process for our client um, up to the, the current point. Um, and so uh, for any of those watching this that are familiar with our client, you probably know that um, the first work cycle in Arclight took place about two and a half years ago. Um, and uh, Jennifer and I worked on the design um, for that work cycle along with the rest of the team to, to get it to the point uh, that it's at in this, this um, version I'm showing on the screen right now. Um, we had to kind of stop that work cycle at a given point in time and move on to other projects. Um, but I think it's fair to say neither Jennifer and I were very uh, happy with the, the UX um, of the application when we left. There were lots of things that we didn't feel was, was quite right, um, but you know we had to stop and move on to other, other work. Um, in the 
the two years um, between that work cycle and when we started the latest work cycle, uh, luckily there were uh, there was other work going on in the community um, that um, helped us with our our, our current uh, work cycle. So one aspect of that work was uh, some usability studies that different institutions did. Um, so Duke and uh, University of Michigan and uh, Indiana all did some really nice usability studies um, that they wrote up and provided lots of feedback on um, issues with the, the current version um, at the time of ArcLight, um, including a lot of UX issues. Um, Another uh, important thing that happened over that two year period was the University of Albany um, actually put a version of ArcLight into production. Um, and to do that, they had to uh, do some visual design uh, to improve some of the, the roughness uh, that we left the, the base application in. Um, and then they did some, some uh, relatively superficial, but still very thoughtful and, and useful um, sort of customizations to the UI. So you see here, for example, uh, the breadcrumbs being broken out onto different lines, which Jack showed you we just implemented. So that was you know, a relatively simple idea, but it was a really good idea. So essentially during the two years we benefited a lot from those usability studies and the work that Albany did to try to improve uh, uh, some of the user experience issues uh, with ArcLight. And um, back in July before this current work cycle started, um, Jennifer was working on another project but I had some time so I uh, started going through all the, the usability feedback um, and looking at the, the Albany implementation started making a lot of tickets for things that um, clearly needed to be improved from a UX uh, point of view. Um, so this, this one ticket is, is a really good example of, I think, a couple of the, the, the very general issues with the, the UX that we wanted to, to improve. Um, so this is a screenshot from you know, a component page in the, the MVP version of ArcLight. Uh, and you know one really high level but pervasive problem we needed to solve was the screen is just very busy and cluttered um, there's lots of elements on the screen um, we're down um, uh, components several levels deep uh, it's not super clear to the user or the user has to do a fair amount of work to kind of understand exactly where they are in the hierarchy and what, what else is available to them in, in this context. Um, and it's not really easy in this context for the user to move to another point um, in the collection. Um, it's not even, you know, they have to, to actually do a fair amount of work to find their way to see what is in the collection and then pick another uh, another component to look at. So those were the kind of things that we knew, you know, uh, were the sort of the challenges we wanted to, to address. Um, and so our first sort of major redesign to try to solve some of those problems um, looked like this. There are a couple screens I'll show you real quick. Um, but you can see here that you know, we immediately sort of adopted that Albany pattern of breaking the breadcrumbs up into new lines. Um, another thing that, that Albany did that, that immediately seemed like a really good idea was moving the sidebar from uh, where we had it originally here on the left. Um, and I knew, noticed that they moved it to the right and that seemed to be really helpful in, in, in aligning the title with the actual content of the page. So. Um, so we immediately sort of started working on a design where we moved the sidebar to the right to give us this uh, more consistent left aligned, um, left alignment of the, the components of whatever you're looking at. Um, and another big thing we, we did early on was um, trying to improve the, um, this is like we've navigated into the tree a little bit here and this tree is just really sort of um, 
well, one thing we're in a component and we can't navigate up the tree. We just sort of get a brief like snapshot of where we are in the tree and a couple of our siblings. Um, and even at the component level or the collection level where we have the full tree available, it's, it's a kind of a cluttered tree with, with the, the children, you know, expansion thing, uh, sort of, I don't know, just aligned a little weird and, and a lot of space, uh, white space and stuff like that. So it's not a very compact and easy to use uh, way to navigate around the tree to see what's actually in the collection. So one thing we, we did immediately is try to, to improve that. And so we came up with a more tabular way of, of showing the tree um, and, and a more compact way of showing if it has digital content and how many children are at each level. So this felt like, um, and I guess I have a couple other examples, yeah. So the, at the component level, a couple other things I want to mention. Uh, there were um, feedback from the usability studies that, that users really liked to see the, the, the tree wherever they were so they had context um, and to be able to move around quickly. And so at the component level, we, we tried to address that um, in a couple ways. Um, one is in terms of navigating easily between components, we, we had this idea of adding a previous and next component um, sort of navigation thing. Um, and that felt like it maybe had potential, but at the same time, it, it, it adds clutter to the page and it's a little awkward um, in, in some other ways. Um, and um, we still had this issue um, that uh, uh, Sean from Duke actually really helped us a lot understand the importance of this. Even with this approach with a better tree, we still had the problem of a user who may want to be, they're in a, a specific component somewhere down the tree, and they, they often wanna just move through the components really quickly to see what's in each one. Um, this is not a great example because all the components here, all the children have the same title, but uh, you can imagine where the titles are different, they get interested in different ones, and they want to really quickly move through them. Well, this tree allows you to click on another one and change to that component. However, with this, this approach, every time you move to a new component, you end up with the about this item tab being in front of you, and now if you want to move to another component, you have to click back to the context tab. Um, so it's a lot of, there's extra clicking going on. So we felt like we were on the right track with this, this, uh, this approach. It was an improvement, but we still weren't there in terms of uh, allowing the user to move quickly around the collection, sort of the arbitrary points in the collection without having to do extra clicks. Um, and also to always be able to see where they're at um, in the collection, um, no matter where they are. And so, uh, some more iterations led us to uh, what is now our current uh, state of the design. Um, and we have, um, I'll, I'll just point out a couple of the changes we made here and um, you know, Jennifer can chime in if she has additional thoughts. Um, so here we're at the collection level and you can see a major thing we've done here is there is no sidebar at all. So we've eliminated the sidebar which the one benefit of that is we now have more room, uh, we have more width, we have the full width of the page, which is helpful for a couple of the, the things that we're gonna look at. Um, and um, the, if we go to like the, the tree here, uh, you can see now that, that we have a lot of room to show the tree, um, we have all those, those compact sort of elements. Um, it's just an easier tree to scan um, and to, to work with. And as we start to navigate down, um, you'll see that, you know, we've got this, this indented breadcrumb approach. And as, as Jack uh, mentioned earlier, we're in the process of re uh, sort of jiggering this whole uh, top stuff up here around the title. So the title will slot in in place of the sort of terminal node of the breadcrumb. Um, but then, then we have, you know, the first tab, once we get below the collection level, is the tree. And this is the case um, as we go through from, from this point on down the, the tree. Anything below the collection level, um, the tree 
the context tab with the tree is always the first thing you see. So the user doesn't have to uh, always have another click to get to it. Um, and so as we go down, um, you know, the tree is always visible and we get down, now we're at the lowest level. Um, we've made one change here that's only at the lowest level, which is we've eliminated at this level, the online content tab and we show the online content of the lowest level object uh, directly up here. Um, and again, that's sort of thinking about what, what does the user want to see when they're at this level um, that probably if there's online content, they're going to want to see it immediately. And this approach lets us show the online content. This could be a viewer if um, that was uh, configurable in a given implementation. Um, but we also still are showing the, the collection context tab. So the tree is available. The user can navigate up and down the tree um, without any additional clicks here. You mentioned that the, the sidebar is completely gone, but I just want to point out that um, the, the content of that sidebar has been moved into the access tab right. that's now present on every screen. So it's, it tends to be static information that is the same sort of throughout the like contact information and terms of access that tends to be consistent throughout the whole collection. And, and we thought it didn't necessarily need to be present visible on the screen at all times. So we moved that into a tab to give us access to that extra space. Um, and then the other bit was the little um, up in the upper right corner, um, the little, to all the tools sort of that are related to the whatever level you're on are in that consistent location now, um, whether it's bookmark or download or um, or request or whatever's available at the level that you're looking at right now um, has been moved up there in a sort of more concise um, and consistent way. Yeah. And so, so with this new design, we, we really, as Jennifer said, you know, this is in a tab instead of the sidebar, but we really, so we really haven't lost anything. Um, we've just, we hope, um, rearranged everything in a way that the, the UI is cleaner, um, but the user still has, um, the user has access to the, the things they need, they want to see immediately. Um, and um, we, haven't, we haven't lost any of the features of the previous layout. And uh, so, yeah, this is where we're at. And as of yesterday, I think the whole, all the, the product owners and, and the team have sort of signed off on this new design as a way forward. And so we're busy uh, writing up uh, tickets to sort of implement this new design. And so I think over the next uh, couple of weeks, um, uh, the, the, in these demos, you'll see uh, a lot of changes in the, in the UI. So stay tuned for those.